Strand. I'm going to bet on Blackjack. Welcome back to Fear the Walking Dead. Season 4, episode 13. There's a crocodile in the water. It feels like a really low budget, shitey movie on sci fi. It, it did, but you know what? I like John. Is it a crocodile or is it a croc of shit? Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! I would say Strand and John Dory, the two best characters on this show. That's not putting the bar high, by the way. I just think that's the world we're living in right now. Would you agree with that? Well, they're my two favourites. Yeah, I, I think this is probably the, the best interaction that we've seen definitely in the second half of the show. It, it's it's two good characters. They play off each other. Um, yeah, there is not really much for them. They're, they're trapped in like this little island. But you're thinking, I mean, if Charlie and Alicia can get a full episode dedicated to them, could we not have got a full episode dedicated to John and Strand? No. It, it just feels like... John and Strand are just not considered like main characters at this point. But Alicia is. Well, Morgan certainly is. Just because you're a Clark doesn't mean you're a main character. And hell, there's not many Clarks floating about these days, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, I, I kind of want to just wrap up the Luciana stuff, right? Looks for Charlie in a library, finds this old guy called Clayton. Turns out he's mangled, but he wants a beer. Turns out he was actually the truck driver as well. And then... She gets him that beer, and then she gets picked up by Morgan and the gang. Do you want to add anything to Luciana? Because she's yeah. a fucking nothing character, and I have nothing really to say. Yeah, so the guy dies after drinking the beer. She went out of her way to get this guy a beer. I mean, it, it didn't look like he was gravely injured or anything like that, but he sipped on the beer, and he died. And it, it just He said felt, the car was holding them together. It didn't look like that, though. It just looked like a waste of time to me. I mean, it was filler. It was almost like... Here, we need a way to introduce Luciana back into this, so... No, I go. mean, I guess it is I guess it is the guy, right, that's been leaving the boxes and stuff, so it's not like it's just completely some random guy, but... I mean, it may as well have been. He wasn't the guy leaving the boxes. I was. The one who's leaving the boxes is Morgan. No, the guy who stopped... The guy who... The, the wheelchair, wheel stole the truck from us is him. Oh, I am, I. Right, well, fair enough, but he was in it with the other guy. At the... The supermarket? Aye. Right, well, they were kind of teaming up. No, they were teaming up, but again, Luciana's back with the group. Da, 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 da. Let's talk about Strand, shall we, and the main guy, um, John Dory. So, yeah, John Dory's building this raft. He's like, I gotta go, I gotta go get June and Charlie Strand. Strand's like, well, this is my sanctuary right here. I'm done looking. I had a place and I went and decided to help you. I had all the wine in the world. Why did I help you, John? Right. John claims here, right, that there's enough room on this raft for two people. It's when, not it, enough room for one. Yeah, really two. he gets on it, it sinks. Uh, Strand then drops one in his drawers. He thinks there's a crocodile coming from Madison, but turns out it's actually going for John Dory. He's like, John, look out. And we see a crocodile, and you know what? The show's pretty poor, but at least they're adding something here. It's something unique. It's something that... I mean, you would see in Resident Evil, for example, where it's not a zombie crocodile by any means, but at least it's a new threat. Yeah, it's something that we haven't seen before. Yeah, and John manages to save himself here, but it was a big-ass crocodile, and the question is, what are we going to do next? Well, they, they, they spot this, like, SUV up a hill. They need the, 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 the monocoque thing of it, so to speak, to get it and then use that as a raft, which seems more real realistic than two planks of wood. But Strand notices a bottle of wine when he's reaching in, and then it, it rolls down a cliff. Like, it drops about 50 feet. And Strand just walks it off like nothing happened. Yeah, he's also battling a walker inside. The, 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 they have this big fall. And the walker gets impaled by, like, a branch. But Strand's perfectly fine. And the, the bottle of wine that he was trying to grab is also intact. So it's just very convenient. And John's like, you try to kill yourself. I don't, I don't want you to kill yourself, Strand. But will these two be able to escape? We'll get back a wee bit later on. Martha, though, she's she's put the radio up to big, um, what's his name, Quinn. And everyone finds out that Quinn is dead. I just do not care about Morgan, this truck, Jimbo, who makes beer. It is the literal job squad. How far has this show fallen? Yeah, June seems upset that she couldn't save Quinn, but, you know, she didn't even know Quinn, so... Yeah, it's like a game we touched on last episode. Like, this is some old, middle-aged woman, out of shape, fat, lard ass, and, and, and she's got this group petrified. 
I mean, come on. I'd accept if the guy in the wheelchair was petrified, because all he'd have to do is come up, she'd have to come up behind him and fucking start wheeling him, he couldn't do anything about it. But, I mean, for the rest of them, seriously, what are we doing, man? Yeah, I don't get it, man. They're, they're making out as if there's a massive threat. I mean, it's literally one woman who's, like, out of shape, old, fat, hasn't got any weapons, hasn't got an army, hasn't got, like, a, a place, you know, hasn't got anything secure. Like, why are they so terrified of one woman? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me, damn it. Um, Charlie and Alicia then get our contact to buy Morgan, but then it breaks up because there's a SWAT fan on their tail. But back to John Dory and Strand there, like, they get, like, halfway, then it sinks, and then they just swim back. I like these two, but, I mean, again, it didn't really do much. John is sad, and he eats one of the candies that remind him of June, damn it. But then the episode ends, like I said, with the radio breaking up. Alicia and Charlie think they're safe, but then what happens? The SWAT fan appears. It was like Jeepers Creepers. And we're talking about she doesn't have any weapons. Well, at least the middle-aged fat woman here does have weapons because she pulls down the windies of the SWAT fan and unleashes the LMG into the side of the truck. Who's caught a bullet? Who's died? I don't know. I mean, at least it's ended the episode on a cliffhanger, but again, it's one woman. You know what I mean? This is like a truckload of like eight people. I guess I know she's in an armoured SWAT fan, but look at Quinn in the armoured SWAT fan. He didn't exactly amount to a lot. I mean, we did also, let's bear in mind, we had the, the great plot for John. He had the horn, he had the battery tuned up to the horn. and Yeah, so I was wondering what he was trying to do here, but he was trying to lure walkers into the, the river so that the crocodile would eat the walkers and not eat them on the raft. So the walkers are coming into the river. I mean, the crocodiles are... It must be greedy, because it keeps eating walkers, and it, it doesn't get full up for some reason. Bit strange. Then the walkers are coming, they're coming, they're coming. And then the horn dies, and literally as soon as the horn dies, the walkers just do a 180. They stop, they turn around, and just walk back. It's like, why would they do that? Walkers wouldn't do that. You know, they wouldn't just randomly not hear the noise anymore, and then automatically do a 180 and walk back the way they came. That was so fucking dumb. And then, like, the crocodile... As soon as the walkers turned back, I guess the crocodile stopped eating and came back for John and the Strand. And it's like, the crocodile would need to digest walkers. It, it wouldn't just automatically swim away. And then, especially if John and Strand weren't making like big sudden movements, because they were like trying to get over slowly without really creating too much noise or like movement in the water. I thought it was just dumb. They should have just kept on going, but Strand was, like, taking a hissy fit. No, John, you fire your gun, you draw those walkers back here, and that will allow us to escape. But it's like, if you fire your gun, then you could also argue that's going to draw the crocodile towards you. I thought it was... I don't think it made sense. I, I like these two as a duo, but the, the whole crocodile thing getting across the river, it, it seemed a little bit far-fetched to me. No, it did. Again... I mean, as soon as it stops, the walkers stop. No, they do not work like that. We have seen, like the, that would that would be like suggesting, right? If someone's getting chased by walkers and they just stood still and didn't make a peep, the walkers would just stop. It does not work like that. And again, like why didn't John do Dory as soon as the horn stopped just fire shots straight away and they would have kept following? Makes no. I mean, that's why I hate about TV shows that do this though. So, like, plot purposes like this. I can accept it for certain characters, but, like, you can't have walkers doing one thing and then the next not doing it. And I think that's a problem with The Walking Dead throughout. Like, we've seen early in The Walking Dead, like, they would actually pick up rocks and, you know, smash, like, windows down, like, in the department store, and also, like, climb fences like, when Rick and Glenn are running away. But then they never went back to that until, like, season 11. You try to tell me that walkers just for, like, 15 years just didn't do that. Come on. You need consistency. Dumb walkers. Dumb ass fucking walkers. But John Dory's a dumb man. But what rating does he get? I'm going to get a 5 out of 10. Well oh. done, John. One of the higher ones this season. I'm pretty sure you already gave him a 5, but I will, I will give him a 5 also. It, it was probably the best episode that we've seen. The second, well, it was the best episode. Probably the best episode we will see, to be honest. Uh, just sick of... It's just more Morgan. I mean, he did have that scene where Martha comes up in the truck and she fires bullets into the side of them and we're supposed to believe no one died well we don't really know I guess someone might have died 
Yeah, I mean, at least a cliffhanger for the last three episodes. At least it's a cliffhanger. I feel like it's something to end on. It's just a, it's a dumb antagonist. You just don't really feel the threats there. It's like one woman. Like, why not at least have a group of people? Why did they think it would be a good idea to have some 50-year-old overweight black woman as an antagonist trying to kill the whole group? Yeah. It's just, it's retarded. No, that's what it is. It's the same with the guy in the... It's just... It's just, it's just a, It's like the guy in the wheelchair. It's like, I can accept him as part of the group, but when he, when he's actually getting out the truck to talk to Morgan, eh, it's ridiculous. You know, you, you don't see that. It's like, even in a place of work in real life, so there's a guy in a wheelchair that works, right? And obviously, there's a lot of people that do work that are in wheelchairs, but they're not going to send him down to the ground floor to, like, pick up something, are they? They're going to send someone who's able-bodied. Aye, if, like, if they're getting a delivery for lunch or something and lunch comes and it's just eat, they ain't going to say to the disabled guy, here, you need to go down all those stairs and grab that food. Yep. Anyway, Fior didn't hit the, the jackpot, they hit the black jack. It's a 5 out of 10. Till next time, goodbye, Jack.